anyway, I was going to title the video uh, a lens you've never heard of, uh, but then I figured that uh, there's usually be some uh, smart, smart comment in the uh, uh, comment section, obviously, saying, oh, of course we've heard of this lens, it's all over the place. <sighs> During the meanwhile, no, 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 no. well, hello, it's uh, Dexter and me back with uh, yet another enthralling, unmissable, gripping, even award winning, some say, uh, Tech Tuesday. And uh, today's uh, Tech Tuesday, uh, I'm not in my office, I'm in my lounge because I'm paying, I'm paying homage to um, one of my favourite uh, YouTube channels, a channel called Xenography. Uh, it's an excellent channel uh, dedicated to uh, vintage um, vintage lenses. Um, but the presenter, a lovely gentleman, uh, presents his videos uh, either from, well, he's either a very small man uh, or he sits in a very big chair. <laughs> so I thought I'd uh, present today's video from my, uh, from my sofa. It's not a big chair, it's a, it's a small sofa. Uh, anyway, although you may not have heard of this lens, you've probably, uh, if you're keen on your photography, seen an image made with it. And it's this one, shot by, uh, it's one of Galen Rowell's most uh, famous images. And I think it's something like a, a rainbow over a village in Tibet, I think it is, something like that. Anyway, it's a gorgeous image and it was shot uh, with um, the subject of today's video. Uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of this lens, but many of you may not. And it is the Nikon 75 to 150 millimeter f3.5 E lens. So a little bit of history first. Back in the late 70s, uh, early 80s, Nikon were, of course, the professional's choice for, for you know, cameras. And their cameras were big, serious uh, SLRs, you know. Uh, but they decided they wanted a little piece of the uh, enthusiast market so they brought out uh, their Nikon, I think it was an EM camera and to go with that camera they brought out a number of, I think it's about 10 to 12 uh, E-series lenses I think there were 7 or 8 primes and, and 4 or 5 zooms, something like that um, and this lens today, <laughs> I've left over here rather professionally oh, see. Xenography wouldn't do this. He'd have the lens on a table by his side. I've learned nothing, nothing from watching, watching the master at work. Anyway, uh, here is the um, zoom, uh, zoom lens, and I thought I'd give you my thoughts on it today. It's a, it's a push-pull zoom with the, the focus ring built into the, the zoom control, and you've got this lovely, uh, colourful depth of field scale lovely colourful um, distance markings and your aperture markings as well. So it is, it's quite a, it's quite a good looking lens, but you can see one of the problems with it immediately is it's got, it suffers with a bit of uh, a bit of zoom, a bit of zoom creep there, but really, do you often shoot with your camera pointing straight up or, you know, straight down? Not normally do you, and in, uh, under normal operating circumstances, it's perfectly fine perfectly fine. The focus ring is really quite a precise affair with about only a half a turn from uh, its nearest focusing point of just under a meter or three feet or so uh, right over to uh, infinity and it zooms from when you've got 150 millimeters and you push it all the way in out to 75. Rather unintuitive that probably um, a little bit more intuitive if it was the other way around, but there we are. It's um, it's a made in Japan lens as well, uh, if that matters to you. And it is, it's a hefty old beast this. It weighs about, I don't know, about a pound, 500 grams. So you could do somebody some serious damage with this if you decided to whack them over the head with it. Uh, the barrel does uh, extend and contract a little bit uh, when you focus. Uh, but I really like having the zoom and the focus ring in uh, in one sort of um, well, run one ring because <laughs> you can zoom and focus as you go. And uh, yeah, it's uh, very very 
uh, nicely damped and smooth in, in its operation. Shooting the lens uh, is quite a surreal experience. Now, I, I'm not sure if this is a faulty copy. It might well be. Now, uh, I didn't even know I had this lens. It was in the back of a cupboard, um, would you believe, um, that I found this. So I don't know how long I've had it. Can't even remember ever using it. So it may be in... Uh, something I inherited down the line somewhere or bought and then forgot all about. I have no idea. Um, but I've never used it. And um, shooting it, as I said, is quite a surreal experience. Um, even mounted natively on my D700, um, you, you have to use the, uh, the aperture ring to set your aperture, obviously. Um, but instead of getting a readout from f3.5, to f32, it goes from f1.4 to f1 uh, to f11, uh, rather bizarrely. So obviously, um, there's either a communication problem between this lens and my camera, or it's simply not meant to operate on more modern uh, digital cameras. Now, having said that, I have shot uh, with older lenses than this on my D700 in the past and they've been fine. Um, and uh, I even put this on my F801S film camera and exactly the same, um, incorrect zoom readings. Um, and therefore it doesn't meet a terribly well in anything other than manual mode. You've got to shoot uh, exclusively in manual mode. So um, shooting with this lens really took me back uh, to when I started photography and everything was manual. Um, even when I started shooting digital, I preferred to shoot everything in manual mode. Um, yeah, so it was kind of like a throwback to those days. But um, it kind of it does meet it all right. Um, using live view is probably best, or adapt it to you know a mirrorless camera. Uh, I have adapted it to my XT4 and my XE1, and uh, using that is okay because you've got you know, uh, real-time uh, exposure, exposure preview then. So it, it, it's fine. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, I've shot with other, with AIS lenses on my D700. I've shot with D-series uh, lenses, which have an aperture ring that you have to set to the smallest uh, aperture and then use the um, front command dial on the camera uh, to select aperture. Uh, but this one uh, seems fairly um, fairly unique. Uh, I've tried mounting it on the lens at, well, all the aperture values from f3.5 right up to f32, and it doesn't seem to make any difference. Uh, you don't get an aperture readout. It doesn't meet an aperture priority. Um, yeah, it's a real, um, it's a, it's a labour of love to shoot, trust me. Um, anyway, faulty or not, it still projects an image onto my camera sensor. So uh, let's have a little look at, uh, at some, uh, some images I shot with it. Now, all of these are um, straight out of the camera, uh, raw images, either shot on my XE1 or D700, and I'll let you know uh, which one is which as we go along. Uh, and they were all shot uh, in my garden, so none are very exciting. None are very good, um, but I did shoot uh, one uh, image of a distant mountainside from the comfort of my uh, conservatory, and uh, I'll pop that image up now um, to show you what the lens is like uh, at 150 uh, millimeters. But you know, as I said, the, the, the examples they, they, they're not you know, they are not good photos by any manner of means. Uh, but at least, unlike some you know, perhaps more angry photographers, I have uh, my own uh, my own photographic examples to show you. Now, as I said, shooting with a lens isn't easy, so I stuck to uh, leaving it wide open and shooting in um, manual mode only, and then having to remember to check my exposure uh, or check the meter, you know, every single shot. Uh, to make sure that it was, uh, you know, correctly exposed. But um, the images are quite surprising. Uh, 
the uh, ones I shot in my garden, they're really quite sharp. They're colourful. There's not that much vignetting. There's plenty of contrast with the lens. Uh, it is the colours that surprise me the most. Uh, they're really quite very vibrant, uh, very accurate uh, colours. Uh, and they definitely belay this lens is a uh, very, very cheap uh, asking price. And I'll come on to that uh, at the end of the video. So it's, it's, it's far from a perfect lens. <laughs> Trust me, uh, it is far, far from perfect. But for the bargain price of around 30 to 50 pounds, uh, you know, it's a worthwhile addition uh, to, to any uh, to any kit, you know. I mean, shoot it natively on your Nikon camera or adapt it to you know, a mirrorless camera. Uh, it's quite a, uh, a unique um, uh, zoom range, 75 to 150, maybe not that usable, but on an APS-C uh, lens, it's, uh, you know, a little bit more, um, a little bit more exciting, shall we say, because uh, you've got like a 225 millimeter uh, equivalent then at, uh, at full magnification. Would I shoot this lens again? <sighs> Probably not as a, you know, a go-to uh, telephoto lens or zoom lens, but certainly from, uh, from time to time as, you know, um, a bit of fun shooting out in the garden, um, you know, shooting uh, you know, images that don't really matter then, put it that way. Um, I'll certainly have some fun uh, shooting with it and uh, yeah, I will be hanging on to it and uh, I will be um, shooting it again. I just love the way the zoom lens... Sorry, don't know where that came from. Um, anyway, uh, as I said, if you want one, they're available on uh, an online auction site for around about 30 to 50 pounds. Uh, all day long um, and if you can get one for all the lower sort of uh, end of that uh, scale uh, then it really is a, a excellent value for money uh, fun lens to have in your kit bag I mean maybe if um, if my example is uh, faulty and that aperture readout and uh, metering thing is peculiar to this lens uh, then it is a real bargain. Uh, it is a real bargain then, but um, I would um, uh, I would uh, caution uh, expectations or manage your expectations then if you are going to buy it because it may, uh, may be a trait of the lens. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that is it from uh, this week's Tech Tuesday. Uh, next week we will be back with a review of uh, a light that I've bought is exciting, isn't it? Oh God, how do I get away with it? I don't know. Yeah, I bought a uh, a ring light uh, to use with my macro lens, and uh, yeah, uh, I made a video about it. <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? It's awful. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching. As ever, Dexter and I uh, really do appreciate all the views we get. This is my little tribute to uh, Xenography, so I, I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. So if you're into your vintage lenses, go and have a look at that. He's a lovely man and uh, makes some very, very interesting, uh, much better than this uh, lens review videos. Um, yeah, so uh, stay safe, stay well, look after yourselves, your loved ones and your pets. And have a look in the back of your cupboards. You never know what's lurking there. Uh, it might be a vintage lens. You never know. And uh, yeah, uh, just be nice. Be a nice person. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.